Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. And while we're at it, we're going to walk through the periodic table to cover the types of elements and a few very basic trends in their properties. But first, let's get oriented to this scene. If you've seen our sketch on electron configurations, you might recognize this landscape. This landscape should look a little something like the periodic table. So as we cover the type of elements, we'll add symbols to the scene that correspond with where those elements are found on the periodic table. The first thing you should know is that the rows of the periodic table are creatively called periods. To help you remember that periods are the rows, the Dalton's rowboat has extra large periods in between SS. Then looking vertically, the columns of the table are called groups which is why a group of Daltons are erecting that vertical flagpole. Anyways, even though the elements in a group are all different sizes and have different numbers of electron shells, they all have the same number of valence electrons. Kind of like how the Dalton kids are all different sizes, but still have the same outer shell on with their matching outerwear. And having the same number of electrons in their outer shell gives elements in the same group similar properties. Just like these kids who all share a penchant for poor decision making. Next time they could at least strap a helmet onto little sis, or, you know, just forego packing an entire flagpole. All right, I've seen about all I need to at base camp. Next, we'll tour this periodic landscape to cover the names and some of the basic properties of the major types of elements. First up, the elements in group one are called the alkali metals. So we've got elk in a line to remind you of alkali. But notice that these elk don't reach the very top of the rock. That's because hydrogen, which is on the top left of the periodic table, isn't considered an alkali metal even though it's in group one. Since it's only got one single electron, it behaves a little differently. But we'll come back to hydrogen in a bit. Anyways, alkali metals are usually found in compounds as salts, such as sodium chloride. You won't find them as free elements. The alkali metals are also really, really reactive. Just like this lighter fluid Mr. Dalton is brilliantly tossing onto his campfire. In fact, these are the most reactive elements. They even react explosively with water. <laughs> okay, well, I see where the kids get it from. I hope Mr. Dalton wasn't too attached to his eyebrows. Anyways, while we're playing with fire, group two of the periodic table is also fairly reactive. So we're gonna stay right by Mr. Dalton's little explosion. That map of the earth right next to the elk line should remind you that these elements are called alkaline earth metals. And while these are reactive, keep in mind that they're not quite as reactive as the plain old alkali metals. Now we'll shift our attention to the open desert for groups 3 through 12. These trees transitioning from summer to winter are a reminder that the groups in this region of the periodic table are called transition metals. These elements are usually shiny and they conduct electricity well. Chances are, when you think of metal, you're thinking of a transition metal. These include elements like gold, silver, iron, and platinum. Moving to the right of group 12 on the periodic table, things start to get a little funkier. In groups 13 through 18, the types of elements aren't broken up into clean columns. So the shape of this outpost mimics the weird shape of the post-transition metals on the periodic table. Like the transition metals, these are good conductors, but they're softer and have lower melting points. Now, you should know that there's some debate about exactly what elements are and are not post-transition metals, and there's no official verdict. So you might see different elements classified as post-transition metals elsewhere, but we stuck with the most common breakdown. Okay, moving to the right, Floyd's climbing rope has outlined the shape of metalloids on the periodic table. As the name suggests, these elements have some characteristics of metals and some characteristics of nonmetals. Hence Floyd's metal like silicon climbing equipment. Metalloids are semiconductive, and they're more brittle than metals, but less brittle than nonmetals. And speaking of nonmetals, they're up next. These very non-metallic plastic climbing holds should help you remember the area of the periodic table they occupy. Now, group 17 and 18 are also nonmetals, but we'll get to them in a bit. For now, we're just talking about this zigzaggy chunk of the table that includes the nonmetals that don't have any other classification. You might sometimes hear these called the other nonmetals. This category includes many of the most abundant elements on Earth, like carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. 
Oh, and remember how I said we'd come back to hydrogen? Well, see the top left corner of that spire also has plastic holds? Yep, hydrogen is a nonmetal too. Nonmetals have more diverse characteristics than many of the other types of elements. But one thing they all share is that unlike metals, they're poor conductors. All right, looking to the right, group 17 is a specific category of nonmetals called the halogens. So we've symbolized them with a halogen light bulb illuminating the shack that you could not pay me enough money to enter. But putting my fear of wilderness serial killers aside, the halogens are fairly reactive elements. They tend to pair with alkali metals to make salts, like sodium chloride, or table salt. But they can also form diatomic molecules, like chlorine gas. And they're often pretty toxic in their diatomic form. While sodium chloride is delicious, chlorine gas is much, much less so. Finally, group 18 contains the noble gases, which are also a type of nonmetal. And it wouldn't be a family road trip without vicious bickering over directions to the nearest gas station, so this billboard is kindly directing the Daltons to the Noble gas station. The Noble gases are unique because they're found as single atoms in nature due to their full outer electron shell. Basically, they're content to hang out on their own without forming any bonds, so they're very unreactive. And that's why this unreactive, sleepy critter is snoozing on the billboard. <laughs> 